Hi students. So today we are going to start lecture 45 in our aerospace engineering course. And today I am going to discuss about the airplane landing performance. I am Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now what happens during landing is that the aircraft is flying in air. The pilot is progressively bringing it down towards the runway. And then at a certain point he effectively touches down the aircraft on the runway. And at this touchdown point, we will say that the velocity equals V subscript T, where T is the touchdown velocity. Now, after this point, the aircraft simply continues to taxi down the runway. And after a certain distance, it's going to come to a stop. And at that point, the velocity is zero. Now, this length of travel from V is VT, where you touch down to the point where you stop. This is the landing distance. And we'll use the symbol as subscript L to denote the landing distance. So today we are going to try to calculate this distance as L because it's going to help us to figure out how much distance an aircraft takes to land. And also this is often useful in getting the runway length you need at a particular airport because if you do know the different type of aircraft which are going to land at that airport, then you can come up with that runway length. So let us look at the aircraft and look at the different forces which act on it. So I've drawn this aircraft here, a schematic, and you can see here that because there is a velocity coming from the front, you have the lift, you have the drag, you have the weight acting downward, and also you have the force here or the reaction. Now the reaction is going to oppose the direction of the aircraft motion and this is coming because of the presence of rolling friction. So because the aircraft has wheels, you are going to encounter this rolling friction and this is equal to mu r into w minus l. So here w minus l is the net normal force on the ground. So it's the weight minus the lift and mu r is the coefficient for rolling friction which in the case of an aircraft, if you apply the brakes, it's going to be something like 0.4 for a smooth paved surface. Now, do remember that when the pilot is trying to land the aircraft, he has applied the brakes, so the rolling friction is much more than in the case of takeoff. So in the takeoff case, it was 0 0.02, and here it has gone up to 0.4. One more thing to remember is the pilot is landing the aircraft, so he really does not need any thrust. So they often set the thrust vector to zero, so there is no thrust acting on the aircraft. Now, based on these forces, we can write the governing equation of motion for landing. So the equation of motion is force is minus T minus R. This is D minus mu T W minus L. And this whole thing is equal to M T V by DT. So this is Newton's law of motion that mass into acceleration equals the force. Now, if you had the variation of drag and lift with respect to time, you could essentially integrate this equation and numerical integration would tell you what's the velocity profile with respect to time. And if you obtain that, you could also obtain S because the distance and velocity are related. Now, this is the exact way of doing this problem, but what we are going to do is we are going to make a number of approximations and we are going to come up with a simple closed form solution. So let's rewrite the equation here. So this was the equation of motion we had, m dv by dt is minus d plus r. Now here we can clearly see that drag and lift are things which vary, but weight is more or less constant and this happens because lift is proportional to velocity square, drag is proportional to velocity square and so on, but the weight of the aircraft is constant here. Very little fuel is expended in this particular path so we can assume that W is more or less constant. Now if we look at our usual equations for lift, we know it is half rho V square SCL where rho is the density of air V is the velocity of the aircraft, S is the area of the wing, and CL is the lift coefficient. If we look at drag, 
we now see here we have CD or the drag coefficient which has two parts the CD zero part is the zero lift drag and the CL squared by pi E AR is the induced drag part so do remember AR is the aspect ratio of the wing E is the Oswald span efficiency factor and phi is a factor which comes in because we are near the ground and so ground effect is going to become important. So what happens is that ground effect typically reduces the induced drag. So this factor phi here, this is less than one and we multiply it by the induced drag factor CL squared by pi E A R. And so this is going to reduce the induced drag. So the factor phi is given by this equation here, which has been obtained from fluid dynamics theory. And this equation says that phi is 16 H by B square divided by 1 plus 16 h by b square where h is the height of the wing above ground and b is the wing span. So if we were to plot this factor phi which I have done here, so on the x axis I have h by b and on the y axis I have phi, you can see that there are many parts of the regime where phi value is quite less. So essentially if h by b is something like 0.5 or below, then the value of phi is quite less. It can be as low as 0.2 and so on. Now, beside the importance of this during the runway takeoff and landing, this kind of phenomena is also used by many vehicles so, such as the ground effect vehicles. And these are essentially airplane-like systems which fly very close to the ground. Very often these are vehicles which fly on the sea or just on top of the sea. So sometimes they are also known as the arachnoplans. So these kind of vehicles were often developed to fly in regions where there is a large sea. Maybe there are a lot of islands in between. And so the arachnoplans can tra travel between them at a much reduced cost because what's going to happen, the induced drag is going to be much less. So now let's get back to the Newton's law of motion and we are going to derive some expressions for the time taken, the velocity and the distance. So we start with F is MA is M into DV by DT. So we can write DV as F by M into DT and then we integrate these two sides from V to zero and zero to T. So what this says is that at the velocity V, that means when you are landing the aircraft, your time is zero and at the end when you have come to a stop on the runway the velocity is zero and the time is t and this can be done if we assume constant force f so that allows me to bring this f out of the integral sign and i am also assuming that mass is constant so in this kind of situation i can integrate this and i get two equations i get negative v is f by mt or t is minus vm by f. Now this minus sign comes in because in this case what happens is that the force applied is a negative force. So actually the time is going to come out positively here. Now from the same equation I'm going to try to calculate distance. So again the basic formula for distance is ds by dt equals v. So we get ds is v dt and this becomes minus f by mt dt which then lets me calculate the distance s so what i do is i integrate this from 0 to s and from 0 to t so at time t equal to 0 the distance is 0 at time t equals t the distance is s and i put the value from t from this equation here so t is minus vm by f so when I bring this equation here into S, I get this equation, which is S equals negative F by M, T squared by two. And then I substitute for T, I get this here. And so I finally get the equation that S is minus V square M by two F. So once again, remember that this equation assumes that I have constant force F and also the force is negative in this case. Therefore, S is going to turn out to be positive. Now, if you are going to plot the different forces to get a physical feel for them, so let's start with the lift and drag variation. So if I look at lift and drag, remember initially at S is zero, 
the plane has landed with a pretty high velocity and so there is going to be substantial lift and drag and as the plane taxis down the runway and comes to a stop at s is equal to sl the lift and drag are both going to become zero so they are essentially directly proportional to v square and from this equation we can see that s is proportional to v square also so essentially d and l vary linearly with respect to s so that's why we have these two straight lines here and of course because you have wing sections which are typically designed for lift by drag maximization systems the lift is much higher than the drag now let's add the next part here which is the weight so the weight remains constant and when you are landing the aircraft we will assume that lift is equal to weight just before the point when you have landed and at the point this essentially holds and so the lift decreases to zero the drag decreases to zero the weight remains constant but the value of r goes up all the way here because what happens that when you start this process at s equal to zero lift is equal to weight so r will be zero that's the point here and when you reach the point s is equal to sl your lift has become zero so you have simply mu rw so you are at this point here also remember that since the pilot has applied the brakes and you are in rolling friction mu r is 0.4 so actually this value is substantially larger than it would normally be if you did not apply the brakes and so that's the point you get now next you can calculate d plus r so here you can see that at s is 0 we have only d r is 0 so you start from here and at this point here you have only r because d is 0 so d plus r essentially goes through a variation like this so this is the factor which we are concerned with d plus r because do remember that the equation of motion was m dv by dt equals minus d plus r so now in the previous equations we talked about the force being constant so what we are going to do is we are going to assume an effective or average value of the force so let's presume this effective force this is minus d plus mu r w minus l the average value and so i can write it in this form and what we do here is that we take the value at 0.7 vt remember vt is the touchdown velocity and then i can say that f effective is minus d plus r the average value or minus d plus r 0.7 vt now i know the equation for s so essentially i can get the value for sl so to do that i substitute v is vt that is the touchdown velocity and i bring in the effective force f effective here so i get this as the equation which i have put in this yellow box for s of l so this is the landing distance it's vt square w by g is the mass 2 and then this is the f effective value which has been taken at 0.7 vt so this equation is very important so let's rewrite this equation and what we do is we now get an estimate for vt so what we are going to assume is that vt is 1.3 times v stall so we can write it as 1.3 times root 2 w by rho infinity scl max so remember the stall speed is given by this expression inside the square root here or rather the expression in the square root here so we clearly know that the stall speed is of course the lowest speed possible so you don't want to actually reach it in flight you keep the aircraft at a speed which is slightly higher than the stall speed so that gives you some margin of safety or factor of safety when you're landing and then i put this value in sl so i get this equation here so vt squared so 1.3 gets squared so you get 1.69 you get w squared term and then at the denominator you get all these terms here so this is the complete equation for the landing distance which we have obtained from our simplified math model by using the effective force so let's take a look at this math model and try to extract some physics from it we can clearly see that the pilot would naturally want to reduce the landing distance as much as possible so one thing he does is he applies the brakes 
so the mu r value would be high for example 0.4 instead of it being something like 0 0.02 if the brakes are not put in place and so this is certainly going to improve the denominator term now we can see that sl is directly proportional to w square so if your aircraft has higher weight for example you are trying to land the a380 you may need a runway length which is much more than if you are lying trying to land something which is much smaller for example uh, airbus a320 now we also see that it is inversely proportional to the air density because sl equals to 1 by rho infinity here or proportional to 1 by rho infinity so what would happen is that the density of air is less then sl will be more so that happens in two situations you can have airports which are situated high up maybe in the mountains and in those cases the landing distance is going to be more also if you have situations where you have hot days or cities where the airports are hot for example during summers then also you will require more landing distance so these are certain things which need to be factored in depending on the altitude and the heat your airport has to go through now there are some more ways to play around with s of l or s subscript l and one of them is to use spoilers so what spoilers do is that they reduce lift so in front of the wing you put up something like this it's basically creates a lot of drag causes flow separation so what would happen is that d would increase and mu into w minus l would increase because lift would decrease so that would mean this is increasing this is increasing so basically the denominator term is increasing so the sl value is decreasing so this is going to reduce the landing distance so spoilers are important you will see that when aircraft are landing the pilot is going to deploy the spoilers and that can often lead to a lot of flow separation you can often see these kind of complex vortex formations which are there if you are sitting near the window seat of the airplane so one more thing which modern aircraft can do is they can do what is known as thrust reversal so in this case what happens the thrust which is normally pointed in the forward direction the pilot can send it in the backward direction and this is certainly going to add to the resistance the aircraft faces so the thrust in this case acts in the direction of the drag and this can substantially reduce the runway distance so this is something which can be used every now and then now let's come to the actual practical guidelines now today what we did is we got an estimate for this distance s subscript l which is the landing distance so from the point where the aircraft touches down to the point when it comes to a complete stop but what is there is that as far as the far guideline is concerned the total landing distance is this ground roll distance that is s of l plus the distance along the ground to achieve touchdown in a glide from a 50 feet height so if you are at a 50 feet height here and maybe you need this much distance here to reach this point at touchdown then this distance has to be added to the distance sl so this is the complete distance as far as the landing distance is concerned and you have to make sure that the runway or the landing strip has this much distance so that you can safely land the aircraft so this 50 feet is kept as a margin of safety or a factor of safety so let's summarize today's lecture we derived this important equation sl and we clearly saw that this is directly proportional to w square that means weight of the aircraft is very important we also saw that there are very many parameters such as density of air cl max d l and mu r which can be used to essentially control the landing distance for a given aircraft so depending on the altitude you are in whether you are a hot day or not you can essentially manage the situation also remember that you can use spoilers to control d and l and the brakes are used by the pilot to control the rolling friction coefficient mu r so again just recall this was the basic diagram of the forces which act on the aircraft and so through the use of this diagram and the forces we were obtained to we obtained this math model which gave us the landing distance so i'm going to end this lecture today 
one important thing to leave you with is that most of the accidents and problems which take place in aircraft take place during landing and takeoff because these are the regions where the aircraft is very vulnerable it's very near the ground and so any mistakes by the pilot can result in catastrophic problems so it's very important to be very careful when you are taking off and even more careful when you are landing because these are the situations when you encounter low air velocity and you are actually touching back to the ground so i'll end this video here and i think this concludes a large part of the problem where we discuss cruise where we discuss takeoff and landing and next we are going to start looking at the vn diagram or at turning flight see you then